This is The Politics of Everything, and I'm your host, Amber Danes. Welcome to the podcast where we want to discuss the politics of everything, from money to motherhood, nutrition to narcissism, startups to secularism, the environment to equality, and much more. Our guests are experts in their field or topic of choice, even if you've not yet heard their name. This is a bipartisan podcast, so while we love exploring varied views and get a buzz from a healthy debate, by no means is this a one-sided forum for any one political view. So please listen up and enjoy the politics of everything. Who else wants to find their inner genius? I know I sure do. My guest today, Yudan Shi, works assisting professionals and entrepreneurs to find clarity in their career and their life so they can focus on what matters most. Her aim is about landing success that's coupled with joy and meaning. Her approach has come from her own experiences of being a successful business executive, juggling the demands of raising a young family, and despite how it all looked on the outside, feeling that she didn't really have it all. More on her story soon. I'm really curious to hear about how Yudan has tapped into this approach that we can all benefit from as we explore the politics of inner genius. Welcome to the program. So Yudan, if we can start off by um, giving us a little bit of a snapshot of your corporate career before you went into your own business. Thanks, Amber, for having me on the podcast. So I graduated from university and went straight into corporate life um, where I started from a marketing position as a junior marketing person, and then worked my way up in the technology field. So I mainly worked for, you know, the um, PC hardware software company across Asia Pacific region. And eventually I ended up becoming a chief marketing officer for Lenovo, uh, which is now the number one global PC brand. And at the time I was working for them as the chief marketing officer for Australia and New Zealand. So my career up until that point was still, you know, pretty much what you call traditional vertical. Um, yes, you climbed the corporate ladder and I guess, um, you know, obviously reached a, a, a pinnacle of success, if you like. I know that you, while you were working, you obviously had some inkling that you wanted more from your life. And my understanding is that you started what is now your full-time business as a bit of a side hustle before you moved into it full-time. So how did you start to go on that journey? Yeah, towards the end of 2008, so I was about age 32, and I started to have this niggling feeling despite I seemingly had it all, if you call looking at a success in the traditional sense, which is the money, social status, you know, having family and house. And in a way, that's all I kind of ever wanted. If I think back as the young Yuda, and you, you know, I was born in a very poor village in China. So I think for a very long time, I'm looking at the world, I go, you know, that's what I wanted to be. But towards 2008, 2007, I started to have this feeling that I don't even know myself anymore for some reason. In the race of trying to get to the success we all strive for, I kind of don't know myself anymore. Um, but what really became the turning point was in 2008, I became sick and um, I, I was rushed into hospital emergency room one afternoon and I was very, very close to the death. And just before they pushed me to the operating room, I had this strangest feeling. Um, never had this before. It was this deep sense of regret. Like, you know, I was only 32 at the time. And is this year? Is my life year? So I kind of made a plea and bargain with the God. You can say that, that if you let me come out of this, I, I, I'm I, not going to live a life as if I pretend, you know, um, um, I wanted to find who I am at the time, but I didn't have the courage to do it. But after the operation, I was very determined to find out why why it bothered me and how I can really, you know, go start to live and work a life that I believe it is truly my life. So that's kind of be- the beginning of my journey. And I think you wouldn't be alone in that. I think, um, you know, you sound like you, you had what we call traditionally the midlife crisis a bit earlier than some. Um, I think 40 used to be the benchmark year when everyone was like, is this it? You know, what's what's ahead? I've done it all. But, you know, it's not sort of satisfying me in many ways and it's not making me maybe happy and have purpose. And I guess from there, you know, did you how did you, did you start to go off and do short courses or how did you actually then, once you did recover from being unwell, what steps did you take to start this journey where you could start your business and, I guess, find more meaning and purpose in your own life? 
Yeah, so you're spot on, Amber, when you say I was not alone and the research has shown I'm absolutely not alone. You're also right of saying it sounded like a midlife crisis, even though I was fairly early. Now, the research has shown actually normally for a human being, um, normally starting from as early as the early 30s, which is my age at the time, it is fairly normal. We're starting to question everything we have achieved up until that point. The things normally only start to get a bit deeper. Um in 40s and 50s, only because traditionally our life tends to finish that, you know, almost finishing 50s, 60s. So that's why people used to call me life crisis in that way. But actually, a lot of people ranging, you know, in 20s, 30s, or through actually questioning that all the way to 70s, 80s. I did um, start my self-discovery journey, like a lot of people, you know, at that point of time, you would, you know, the things you do definitely for me was I would read books, I went to courses, I, I talked to a counsellor, um, I even did a therapy. I thought something was seriously wrong with me because I have it all and I should be grateful. And I was constantly reminding myself to be grateful, you know, think about the other people less fortunate and trying to stay positive. So I was using all of this methodology, but none of that helped None of the help that you can pretend to be great, grateful and you can talk about your upbringing for hours and for years. It does not still help to actually find the clarity around who you really are. So once I've tried all the traditional sense, also to me, realistically, I had two young children. My younger daughter was only three, four years old. I don't have the luxury really to, you know, quit my job, quit my life, go to the end of another world and just go find myself. So anything takes me away from my family more than two days is just not feasible at the time. So I therefore started looking at ways that is more practical, that would really help me to find that journey while I'm still here in Sydney, in my job, still being a mother of two children. So that's kind of my starting point. Would you like me to tell you a bit more around how I eventually find it? Absolutely. And I think just to jump in here, it does sound like a familiar process that I've also been through in my own life. And I also have two children. So there you go. We're walking similar paths and we're probably a similar age. I guess what I'd love to get into is, you know, in a nutshell, what is this sort of strength and inner genius approach that you developed? It sounds like you have found, I guess, a renewed direction and an energy that's making you you know, in your own words, a better leader and a, and a better pe- mom and probably a better partner as well. And also leading you to those feelings of joy and success and overall fulfillment that that's really what, what we want. I mean, I don't really like using the term happiness too much because I think that's bandied around a lot. But yeah, if you could just sort of unpack for us how you got to this approach that you've developed and, and what what's involved. Yeah. So in contrary to the traditional way of, you know, if we are unfulfilled, unhappy, traditionally a lot of people would start seeking external validation. So, and this is when you typically see the behaviors around, you know, you might thought a holiday can fix this, a promotion can fix this, but all of that is just an external stimulation and a validation. So through my research, that shows me that actually every one of us was born in a certain way and we're actually born with these amazing talents and gifts, which is what I call strengths. So these are the natural talents and gifts we each have, the things that we're just great at and the things we love doing. And then, so when i looking at that, it completely made sense because part of the reason a lot of people are not happy in that job is because actually they fall into job through just by life. They fall into job by expectation, they never really ask themselves this question, what I am naturally really great at and what I truly enjoy doing. And then on top of that, I also overlaid two more factors. So really in a nutshell, inner genius is we look at intersection of your strengths, which is your natural talents and gifts, and the passion, which is what drives you, what motivates you in life. And the third component is the value. What value can you contribute? to others, to the world, to the team, to the company, to your clients. We're looking at the intersection of these three circles, your strengths, your passion, and your value. The traditional approach, though, you hear people say this a lot, um, just go pursue your dream, just go pursue your passion, and with all the resilience and persistence, you're going to achieve it. It's not like that, because if you're only just looking at a passion, if you don't have the natural talents back you up, and if you cannot articulate the value and the contribution you give to the world, 
then that passion is very much a self-indulging. So that passion is very much a self-centered hobby. And therefore, when you're looking at the intersection of all three, this is where you get the most joy. Think about this. When you're doing something you're truly great at, what do we get? We get the confidence, right? We get the competence. When you do something you're passionate about, you get this joy, you get this motivation, get out of the bed every day. When you get the value, the value you can give to other people, what do you get? You get this immense meaning and sense of purpose. So inner genius, really looking at the intersection of all three that innately we already possess. Excellent. So it sounds like there's obviously, like you say, a multi-pronged approach. So just fast forward to what you do today. I mean, you obviously teach others this and the work must take you to some really interesting types of businesses and even places. So what does your life look like these days in terms of, of the coaching work you do and who do you work with? I typically working with, um, um, so in my individual practice, um, so in my coaching, mentoring and workshops, I work with professionals and executives and also entrepreneurs, really, you know, helping them to find what really matters in their life or their business. And really looking at that, again, that amazing gifts that each have got, because we all have got that amazing gift. Without that amazing gift, um, it's kind of, if you think about this, you are diamond, you are gold, but you're kind of just like a uncovered right so in a way we're really trying to uncover all of that and then bring that in the most meaningful way and then I also work with our corporations um because I believe that you know if you think about these corporations are the biggest entities hosting all the employees and the workers and uh, corporations can play a huge important role in helping and supporting the employees encourage them to utilize more of their natural talents and strengths in their current job. So in contrary to what a lot of other people think, because again, so traditionally when people think about fulfillment, success and career, they immediately think, oh, does that mean I have to quit everything I have today? And so the normal fix is if I'm not happy today, I need to stop it. I need to quit. But That's right. And I think that's what a lot of people think. They think it's all or nothing, but perhaps that's not true. That is completely not true. So most people are thinking, and as a human beings, our decision making often is like that, because we just think about is it option A or option B? Is it black and white? And is it quit or stay? Now that decision is so overwhelming, quit or stay, that's a big decision. So therefore a lot of people get stuck right in the middle, do nothing. Because when decision is too hard, we do not do anything. So, but what I'm trying to say is, okay, if this is a baseline, if you cannot go anywhere, right, you're stuck in this job, if you still don't know what's your natural talents, what drives you, what value you can contribute to your current team and organization, guess what? You go to move to another organization or if you quit your job, run your own business, you're stuck. You will be back and get stuck again <laughs> in a couple of months time after the honeymoon period. Because the honeymoon period was only because you stopped your pain. That's a band-aid. Without understanding what truly drives you, makes you fulfilled and makes you talented, you cannot truly bring value to an organization and you cannot truly really attract the right clients who will appreciate your talent so that's a step one is just to stay where you are in a way but invest time knowing yourself and then as you become better at understanding your talents bring the talents out turn that into valuable contribution now you can really do anything you want in a way because now you truly know what you want that's totally that totally makes sense it's so logical in many ways but i think we all struggle with that with that process so that's obviously where your skill set comes in i'm just going to challenge you for a moment there's one idea that you shared and i've just read this obviously on the on the material that you have on your website is that our so-called dream jobs are often aligned with our authentic strengths without sacrificing financial income and for you I guess you've challenged a lot of your own like you say your upbringing and the success you supposedly had that wasn't making you happy and today you you kind of have you have what your version of having it all is you you mentioned you've got a a profitable property portfolio and your coaching business that you love and you sound really fulfilled in what you're doing look can people all sort of have that similar version of success or do you think some people will never really leave that comfort zone and and kind of push themselves because it is a challenge to leave that security even if you're not loving it yes spot on again you know so so the answer would be if people willing want really truly want that and want to go down that journey absolutely i believe you can achieve both success and meaning at the same time and which is where i'm really trying to help people see that it's not mutually exclusive it is inclusive prosperity actually means the 
you know, financial prosperity and internal, you know, your fulfillment. Um, and the reason why I said this is completely achievable, and which is also the reason partially I was doing side hustling for many years before I do my full time, run my full time business is exactly because of that. So the normal approach, like we discussed before, people think it's either quit or stay. Well, you can, you know, you can stay in your current well paid job. And um, starting to invest time in yourself, finding your natural strengths and start to bring that strength into your current job. My experience is before I made my switch, my job was the same. But by simply understanding where is my talent, where I can add most contribution to my team and organization, it made me a better leader. So I didn't have to give up my job, which means I get to keep my salary. But at the same time, I'm using my job as a self-development foundation. So rather than blaming the company, blaming the industry, blaming your boss makes you miserable, right? Invest, turn that negative energy into a positive energy and start think about how I can truly bring my best talent to the job I have got. So that's what I typically would invite um, um, advise people who especially has big family obligation, always say to them, use your current job as a way to make yourself as a better person, better leader and better business owner. So that's a step one, meaning you don't have to sacrifice anything. The second thing is interestingly, once we become more in tune to our true strengths and talents, we naturally become more confident because that's something you're great at. Again, I'm not comparing. I'm not saying you have to compare with me. I'm just saying comparatively within you, you have these talents. If you use it, you become more confident. Research has shown that people's confidence and level of happiness immediately increase when we are in our strength zone. What that means is now everything in life look better. So to me, I never got into investment property until I became happier, until I became confident. So it creates a ripple effect. And then on the third thing is because you're starting to use more of your talents, now your talents become really, really good. So for me, for instance, for a very long time, I knew that my ultimate will be doing the coaching and training and speaking, which is what I'm doing today. But I still needed a time or period to practice that. So by identifying my strengths as early as possible, I had spent and invested my last several years mastering what maybe mastering a big word, but constantly developing my natural talents rather than wasting time developing my weaknesses. So eventually I got to a stage that I'm feeling very confident to leave my job and then run my business different from a lot of, a lot of other entrepreneurs. I didn't feel like I had to start from scratch because I had been practicing that for several years with a secure job. It's almost like training for a, the Olympics or something, isn't it? Sort of, you know, the idea that you've got to get, you've got to do the, the hours, you've got to do the, the practice to get really good at it. And even if you have a natural ability, it sounds like you've really focused on, you know, adding value to what already seemed like a very big passion of yours. And I, I really think that's great advice. And I, I love the other the other takeaway that I'm, I'm getting from our conversation, and I'm sure the audience is as well, is the idea that you don't just turn one tap off and the other tap turns on. So like you say, it's not about throwing out your job straight away. It might be about using that as an opportunity to change your mindset and change, you know, how you're interacting on a daily basis and perhaps what you're, what you're fo- focusing on as well and paying attention to. So I think that's really, really great advice. So just to change tack a little bit, the term genius is quite loaded, I think, for many people. And, you know, I often think when people say genius, I think of, you know, child prodigies or Mensa worthy IQ people that we might know who are off the charts in some ways. But you've packaged this idea of discovering our inner genius. What, what exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, so, you know, when I was explaining to you the inner genius, really the intersection of our greatest talents and the passion and the value we can bring to the world, what that means is um, I'm not um, calling we are the genius, but within each of us, truly there's a diamond within each of us. And again, not in, not in a way to compare. So it's just comparing ourselves with ourselves. So the inner genius is really, I guess, you know, in a way, the highest, the best part of you, the most gifted, most talented part of you. And I truly believe it is actually our job to find it. And it's our job not to waste it. There's way too many people are talent, very talented, and um, but the talents is not being shown properly because they haven't invested in that time and 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 to you know to discover that and to maximize that 
Um, so also on the term, term genius, you know, there's research actually has assumed um, um, this, um, this great guy called uh, Nick Jablik in United States has done a research over 300,000 people. He studied people who's very successful, who's genius, um, and who's highly fulfilled. What he discovered is that out of 300,000 people, there is only one single attribute that separates the people who is on the top of the game. So I'm talking about success and fulfillment with the rest of the population. That is their ability to know their strengths and ability to maximize it. So there's tons Wow, of that's incredible. So ability to know their strength and ability to maximize it. Yeah, and they're very, very logical, isn't that really? Very, very logical. Makes complete sense. <laughs> Absolutely. It's just um, we all struggle, I guess, to get there. I'm always a big believer that um, we don't get to this journey on our own. So for you, do you have any special mentors or inspirational people that have guided you throughout your career and life? And if so, who are they and what have they taught you about this many of success? Definitely. There's so many of uh, them. And I would say, you know, the the, the biggest supporters and uh, um, would have to come from my um University of Sydney when I was doing the Master of Coaching Psychology. I was studying with some most brilliant people in this field of coaching and positive psychology. You know, Dr. Tony Grant, who's the father of coaching psychology, Dr. Susie Green, which I absolutely adore. She's a world-renowned positive psychologist um, in the field. And Dr. Alex Lindley, who's a UK strength psychologist, he's the one created strength psychology in the field. Um, although I did not study with him personally, I learned everything from him around strengths. And, you know, these people are not only you know, creating this theory, they live through it. So I, I was very fortunate to back in 2009 to 10, when I was still trying to find myself, that I came across University of Sydney and came across the entire coaching psychology faculty. And I would say that's the biggest turning point for me. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that. As we wrap up, what are the top three tips that you would have for listeners who are curious about tapping into the politics of inner genius? I want to say really our life, our time on this planet is quite limited. This is how I view it. So if we have a choice, which choice do you want? You know, do you want a more fulfilling, more joyful, a more happier one? Or do you want a lesser version of that? So I always say, look, it's a choice. It's up to you. So the first step is making a decision. Um, do you want this? And then second one knows that if you want this, there's plenty of people living in this world. You look at people like Richard Branson, Oprah Winfrey, you look at millions of other people who have already demonstrated that. And you can see the reason they're successful and happy is because they live in the inner genius zone. So you know it's possible. So then the step three is simply to find out how. So whether you're going to read a book, go to a workshop, or go find a mentor and coach, you know, work with people who have been through this journey who, and who's willing to help you out. I think it's through that, you know, just the decision and just believing this and then invest in yourself and do the work. We will all get there. And it is an ongoing journey. So I'm still learning every single day I'm on this myself. Yeah, so I think lifelong learning is a fantastic takeout message. If you do want to connect further with you, Dan, there are some details of her website and uh, contact information on our show notes. You have been listening to The Politics of Everything. Until next time, keep well. Thanks for listening today. If you've enjoyed The Politics of Everything, we thrive on feedback. So please add a short review and share the podcast with your network and your friends and family. I'm also always on the hunt for fabulous new guests. So if you've got a view to share and an idea how to get our listeners excited, please email me at amber at bespokecoms, that's B-E-S-P-O-K-E, C-O-M-M-S dot com dot A-U and we'll be sure to get back to you. Until next time.